How's it going guys? Bond Callum here again with another video. This is the second video on this channel and today we're going to be reviewing the cheapest generator on Amazon at the time that I bought it, which is the AlphaWorks Inverter Generator. Now I was a little skeptical about this thing myself. Uh, in this video we're going to test the load capacity as well as fuel efficiency of this thing and just kind of have a general overview of what the generator is like. This video is sponsored by me. I paid for everything in this video. Uh, no one paid me to have an opinion on this. So my thoughts on this product are not bought. I'm an actual person who's actually reviewing this product. What you can do to help me out with future videos though is like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's completely free to you. It takes about five, 10 seconds, but it tremendously helps me out. Alrighty, so earlier I said this was the cheapest generator on Amazon at the time that I bought it. And I got this thing for literally just 250 bucks, which is crazy. Now it's listed for 280, but I have a Chrome plugin called Honey, which again, not sponsored by them. It's just an app that I use. But in the checkout process, they found a $30 coupon for this thing. So it ended up only being 250 bucks for me. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over everything that comes in the box with it. So obviously the generator itself, when it comes, it's not filled with oil and it does not come with oil either. So you will have to buy some. All you need is some 10W30 oil. And personally, I put about 20% Lucas oil in it as well because I'm living in my RV full time and I actually plan to use this quite a bit, especially in the winter right now when I'm using a lot of power for heat. So I want this thing to have as long of a life as possible. And during all the tests in this video, it's the same configuration with the 20% Lucas oil. Also in the box, you get this tool set here, which is funny because this is a flathead screwdriver driver and as far as I can tell there's not a single flathead screw on this thing. They're all Phillips screws so I don't know why they included a flathead screwdriver. And then you also get a wrench to take your spark plug out. And then of course you just get the instruction manual as well. Now this generator is very confusing. So on the Amazon listing it says one thing, on the generator itself it says another thing, and then in the manual it says a completely different thing. So there's like three different spec sheets for this thing, uh, one on the generator, one on Amazon, and then in the manual here, which to me was a really bad sign. So for example on Amazon this thing said that it had a capacity, a maximum capacity of 2,250 watts and a running capacity of 1,800 watts. Now on the top specs here, it shows that the rated power is 1,800 watts, which seems to be in line with the RMS rating. And it says the maximum power is 2,200 watts. So it's about 50 watts short of the Amazon listing, but not that big of a deal, honestly. And then in the manual, the ratings match onto the generator here. Now, according to the generator itself, it does have an 80cc engine. Amazon and the manual both say 79cc, but same difference. The biggest thing that definitely got me was the runtime, which is why I'm wanting to test the runtime on this thing here. So on the Amazon listing, it said up to seven hours at 50% load. And then in here, it says four hours rated power. It doesn't say under what load that is. It doesn't say anything like that. Um, but those are two very different numbers, four hours versus seven hours, that's almost half. So the only way we can really tell what this thing is capable of is just by testing it. So let's go ahead and get right into that. So what I did to test this thing was I had various different loads on it. I measured out a cup of gasoline into just a regular measuring cup and poured it into the gas tank. Now this thing has a 1.1 gallon gas tank. So then I just uh, took the runtime from that one cup of gasoline multiplied it by 17. Reason I multiplied it by 17 is because there's 16 cups in a gallon and this is a 1.1 gallon gas tank. So just an extra cup for good measure. It's not the most accurate testing in the world. Uh, if anything, it'll be slightly less time in these tests than is in actual reality, but just by a couple minutes, it's close enough and I don't feel like spending all day doing these tests. The other things to note for these tests here is before the test, I did warm it up for about 20 minutes. I just put a half a cup of gasoline in there and that's about how long it ran for. The reason I warmed it up is because uh, typically generators use a lot more gas when they're cold than when they're warm. And it's unlikely that anybody watching this video is gonna be just running this for a short period of time. Most people are gonna be running it for at least an hour or two at a time. So I warmed it up beforehand. I also broke it in, so I've run this thing for about 16 hours so far with about half the load, uh, just running my camper. So it's nice and broken in, changed the oil, and we're good to go. Alrighty, so on this first test here, I just did no load, so this would basically be just it running with nothing plugged into it. Now, technically there is a slight a bit of a load just because of the meter that I have plugged into it, but it's basically nothing. It's like half a watt, if anything. So the no load runtime with a full tank of gas is about nine hours, which is impressive actually. That blew away my expectations for a $250 generator. The next test that I did was at a quarter load, which uh, the way I did this was I just plugged in four 100 watt light bulbs into it. And the thing about this is it's really, really weird. It ran for about 30 minutes longer with 
a small load on it than it did just idling, which I don't understand. And I thought maybe I just messed up measuring gasoline or something. So I ran these two tests again and got identical results. So I guess it runs longer with a small load on it for some reason. Beyond me as to why that would be. The next one I was trying to get as close to uh, halfway as possible, but I overshot it by about 100 watts. Basically what I did for this one is I just plugged in a single burner rated at 1000 watts. And with that kind of a load, it'll run for 5.27 hours, which is close enough to the Amazon rating that I'm not really gonna question it. If I took that 100 watts off, I'm sure it'd be right around the six to seven hour mark. So the Amazon listing is accurate with this one. So I'm not entirely sure what the uh, continuous running time is referring to. I'm thinking that might be the full load run time, which ended up being about 4.13 hours. For the full load run time, I just connected a space heater to it. Uh, the space heater has two settings, so low, medium, and high. High is 1600 watts, medium is 1400 watts, and low is 1000 watts. Now here's where it gets interesting with this uh, generator here. So it says it's rated for 2250 watts as a maximum rating, and 1800 watts as an RMS rating. And in the manual it says a little bit different numbers, but effectively the same, 2200 versus 1800. And in the manual it says effectively the same thing, it's 2200 max and then 1800 RMS, which is close enough. However, I found this to not be an accurate load rating. So on the space heater, when I was trying to do a maximum load test to see how long it would run on a maximum load, it wouldn't handle it. The space heater pulls 1600 watts, which is pretty close to the maximum. You never really want to fully max out these generators, but 1600 watts is within the range of maximum load, just given that 100 to 200 watt buffer, just to be sure. But when I tried to do this test at 1600 watts, I got very different results than what the manual was saying. Now, my kilowatt meter did say that in fact it was going with 1600 watts. However, at 1600 watts, this cannot maintain 120 volts. It was sitting around the 70 to 90 volt mark, which means that it cannot continuously handle 1600 watts. So the RMS rating on this guy is a little bit overshot, but it's still pretty impressive for a $250 generator. So what I ended up doing was I changed the space heater to the medium setting, which is only pulls 1400 watts. And even though it was still floating around the 100 to 110 volt mark, that's still within spec of AC voltage. So I would say probably 1400 is the top end for this guy as far as an RMS rating goes. 1600 watts is going to be probably the maximum rating for this guy in real life here. So the ratings for it uh, as far as the maximum and the RMS go are definitely overshot in the specs, but still pretty impressive for a $250 generator. And at full load, which again was 1400 watts, not 1800 watts, this thing ran for about four hours, which makes me think that maybe the manual wasn't wrong, but it was just reading it for full load. So this thing is actually a pretty good generator for 250 bucks. I was not expecting the quality that came with it. And my first impression definitely made me think that this was probably sketchy. So now moving on to the front panel here. It is single phase, so there's only one set of outlets on this guy. You also have USB ports to charge your phones with. I've not actually tried to charge my phone with this, but it says it's 2.1 amp, which is a pretty slow charge. This will probably charge an iPhone 10 in two to three hours. We also have a 12 volt connection here for charging your car batteries. It does not come with a cable for it. And then you also have parallel outlets in case you wanted to connect two of these guys together. And then at the very top here, we have our indicator lights. So you have your low oil light, your overload light, and your output light. This outlet light turns on when it's producing power. This overload light turns on when the load connected to it is just too much for it. And then this light turns on when the oil is low. The cool thing is this does have an automatic shutoff as well. So at some point when this light turns on, the oil's low. And at some point when it gets even lower, it just shuts off, which I think is really good. And then of course you have eco mode. This does have eco mode built into it. And with all my testing that I did today, eco mode was turned on. And then of course you have your circuit breakers. So you have your AC circuit breaker and your DC circuit breaker. The only thing with the circuit breakers is there's no information on them. So I'm not really sure what they're rated for. So overall, what do I think of this generator? Uh, well worth the 250 bucks. This thing is a beast. This thing is a beast and it sips gasoline. Even at full load, running four hours on maximum load, that's really impressive. And I believe if you took good care of this thing maintenance wise, it'll probably last you a little while. Starts on the first pull every single time. Like I said, I had it breaking in for two days, uh, so a total of 16 hours of runtime. And both times I was just running it overnight with a space heater connected to it. 
I'm going to be doing a week update with this guy and maybe a month update too, depending on how these videos do. Well, anyway, that's it for this video. Again, if you guys like this video, be sure to like and then subscribe to my channel here. This channel is just reviewing a bunch of little gadgets that I find on Amazon, uh, whether it's generators or projectors or Tesla coil, just a bunch of random stuff that I can find on Amazon that I think is cool. I'll be reviewing it and putting it on this channel. We'll see you guys in the next video.